Introduction to the Chaotic Jianghu Demon Hero As a pure person like me, just because my divine skills are too strong, why do you insist on treating me like a big demon? Li Xiaobai unexpectedly learned that he had been connected to the Rendu Meridian, and that any internal skill, such as mental health, was twice the result with half the effort. He quickly mastered the divine skill known as the world's number one old king. But later on, he was pushed up to the position of the leader of the demon cult by chance, and soon after, he became a big demon, chasing after all major sects in the entire martial arts world. That's okay. If I don't go to hell, who will go to hell? Let me, this big demon, eliminate you demons in crooked ways. In addition to accidentally obtaining a peerless martial arts secret book in his hand, the rumored treasure of the imperial tomb, and the unparalleled Fengming sword and Longin sword, the chaotic world of the martial arts world has become increasingly chaotic due to their fleeting swordsmanship and bloodshed. Behind all of this, there is also an unprecedented and shocking conspiracy hidden. Chapter 0 Preface Hollow White You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the evening, on the back mountain of Shaolin Temple, there is a wooden house and a small courtyard by the cliff. There are several sparse plum trees in the courtyard, with blooming flowers in full bloom, red, pink, purple, and white, competing for beauty. Dong! Dong Dong! Dong Dong Dong! A handsome young Zen master in his early twenties, commonly known as Li and named Xiaobai, was sitting leisurely under a plum tree, counting the falling flowers in front of him and a string of prayer beads in his hand. He couldn't help but recite Amitba Buddha, in his mouth, while his other hand kept tapping on the wooden fish, which sounded somewhat uncoordinated. He sat alone in the empty courtyard, leisurely gazing at the falling flowers, reciting scriptures and knocking on fish, for two years, but it seemed like in the blink of an eye. Hollow, come out and take a look. The abbot, Master Kongwu, has white eyebrows and beards, a thin and small body with slightly leaky front teeth, but his steps are agile. As soon as he walked outside the courtyard, he did not enter, and his kind and kind expression on his face was full of sadness. There are some people coming outside who insist on seeing you, he said, no see. Let them go. The little Zen master still knocked on the wooden fish without following the rhythm and said calmly, my heart is not empty yet, and I can't see anyone. You are so multitasking, how can your heart be empty? Multitasked, how can you be empty? Hollow murmured a sentence, as if realizing something, staring blankly at the blooming flowers on the ground. The wooden fish and prayer beads in his hand also paused. The people who have returned here are quite different, there are hundreds of them, and we can't even drive them away. The abbot sighed softly, if you don't show up again, they will have to set fire to the mountains. What kind of person? So rampant. The hollow space was a bit strange. The old abbot, senior brother, who was of the same generation as himself, personally brought someone to invite him. Unexpectedly, things were not easy. There are many experts in the temple, but they can't stop them, he said, not really, it's just. The abbot thought a little, then turned to Su Huan and said, these people also took a group of more than a hundred female relatives, and they didn't do anything, just stayed there, and they were still singing and dancing. The eighteen arhat and thirty-point six vajras who guarded the temple, and seventy-point-two bronze men, as well as a hundred and eight-yard sweeping monks, I'm afraid they won't last long. People from dark stars. Not bad, no, let them cook it. Hollow knocked the wooden fish again and said, burn it clean, won't it be pure? Empty coming, empty going, hollow mindfulness, isn't it not a free tathagata? All forms are empty, Buddhism is not empty, neither increasing nor decreasing, neither giving birth nor dying. The old abbot was slightly taken aback, then smiled faintly and recited, Amitba Buddha. Just as he was about to turn around and go down the mountain, a young monk hurriedly reported that a large group of troops had suddenly arrived at the foot of the mountain and had arrived outside the Vasakiya Mani Hall, driving away the troublemakers. But the official of that dynasty had brought someone to see the abbot himself. 
After a stick of incense, the old abbot personally brought the official family and a group of soldiers to the outside of the small courtyard and said, Hollow Junior Brother, this. Benefactor, I have something important to talk to you about. The official family was actually the newly crowned emperor of the Central Plains, the newly crowned king of the great treasures, and the talented emperor Guorong, also known as Chai Rong. This is because the northern Han and Khitan tribes in the northern region, taking advantage of the recent death of Guo Wei, the founder of the Zhou Emperor in the Central Plains, and the unstable situation, joined forces with a so dot called 100,000 strong army to invade the south. Guo Rongchu was in charge of the throne. Before preparing for the imperial expedition, he came to discuss with this hollow Zen master, intending to invite him out of the mountain to help. At this moment, Guo Rong, dressed in a Confucian robe, and a majestic general with golden armor beside him, who was the commander of the imperial guard Zhao Kuanyin, both entered the small courtyard of the meditation room together. After a moment, both of them walked out of the courtyard with a somewhat gloomy expression, but it seemed that they had not been able to fulfill their wishes. They quickly led the people back down the mountain. You big devil, you finally dare to show up. At the beginning of the night, in the courtyard outside the Vasaki Yamani Hall, the group of Dark Stars returned. They were harassing and confronting the monks who were guarding the temple. The courtyard was full of black pressure. At that time, they saw the hollow Buddhist monk Li Xiaobai coming leisurely, and everyone was awe-inspiring. Among the Dark Stars, there were over a hundred female relatives, many of whom had never seen the world before. Even other people who were accustomed to watching the wind and moon saw the hollow walking, their beautiful eyes staring and screaming loudly, and some even opened their mouths without saying a word. It was like never having seen a bald and handsome young master before. Dark Star, the first young man with a red plum blossom tattoo on his face and known as the Star Handsome, waved his hand to signal the silence of the women's group he brought. In astonishment, he shouted again, You killed your parents, your master, and so many others. Do you think hiding in this temple can save you a lifetime? This move is called, Capturing Thieves and Capturing Kings. Didn't you want me to surrender my divine skill, did you remember? As soon as the hollow Zen master turned out from the temple, his figure flashed like a phantom in the dim light. Without waiting for everyone to come to their senses, he had already captured the star marshal alive in his hands. What kind of number one marshal in the world are you? If you don't want me to draw another flower on your face and turn you into the number one ugly in the world, then take your people and get out of here. Do you understand? Next to Xingshui, there was a tall and sturdy man with a half-battered face and a mountain axe in hand, as well as a short and chubby man wearing a high hat and holding a bald pen. The two Sha Xing protectors were shocked and each had already swung his axe up and down, shouting and rushing towards the hollow. Speak east and strike west. Fish in muddy waters. Killing someone with a borrowed knife, beauty's plan. The hollow figure flickered around, still holding on to the star commander in his hand. In one move, he repelled two evil stars, followed by several more moves. In a flash of lightning, he knocked down dozens of besieged dark stars around him. The person had already moved around the entrance of the courtyard and said, Who else wants to learn this 36 strategy star flash divine skill? Humph. Even if your divine skills are unparalleled, what if you are invincible in the world? Amidst the screams and screams of the surrounding gang members, the young star handsome sneered coldly, Don't you want the antidote to star dizziness? And my little sister Xiao Wei, don't you want to see her too? Star dizziness, as the name suggests, means that every night when the stars are in the sky, the person with this poison only needs to look at the dazzling stars in the sky, and then feel dizzy and dizzy, as if each star is circling in circles big and small before their eyes, making it difficult for them to control themselves. And the deeper the internal power of the person who is poisoned by this poison, the more intense the poison will be if they use their internal strength. Not only will they feel dizzy and bloated, but it will also make them feel crazy and suffer unbearable pain. Xiao Wei Hollow Li Xiao Bai couldn't help but be taken aback and looked up at the faintly visible North Star. 
Among the more than a hundred female relatives who came with them from the Dark Star people, a masked woman in a dark purple robe couldn't help but tremble at the sound. She lifted her bright eyes and looked at the hollow. As long as you obediently listen to me and hand over the mind technique of that divine skill. Xing Shui smiled, I will relieve the poison of your star dizziness and Xiao Wei's sleeping beauty. How about that? After speaking, he didn't forget to instruct the group of around a hundred female celebrities, musicians, dancers, and others he brought. Continue playing music, continue dancing. Are you talking nonsense enough? Hollow only smiled and said, I am hollow, empty and empty hollow. What does what you said have to do with me? Since that's the case, then no one can blame me. Xing Shui exclaimed in a shout, the heaven and earth net gossip formation. Upon hearing the order, the dark star crowd moved, wielding swords and knives in unison. In the blink of an eye, they formed a formation and surrounded each other in all directions. Zhaozhuyuan.com Amitba Buddha The Great Vajra Demon Subduing Formation Arhat, Vajra, Bronze Man, etc., among the monks who were entangled by many gorgeous and scantily dressed female relatives, heard the abbot's order, they immediately shouted and moved to form an array. In addition, there were 110 temple-sweeping monks present, each waving their brooms and waiting to act. I have the labor abbot and all the senior brothers now. Hollow Zen Master and Li Xiaobai casually knocked down several enemies who had rushed to attack and bowed in a salute. Surrounding way to save Zhao. The golden cicada peels off its shell. Both sides were about to fight and fight, but Li Xiaobai quickly turned around. Taking advantage of the chaos and just as the enemy formation was about to break out, he indirectly took a few shots and flew outside the courtyard with the star commander, disappearing into the night sky in an instant. After more than a month, Zizhou Gaoping. The two armies faced each other, with the northern Han and Khitan armies deploying 50,000 soldiers. During the initial trial of the Zhou Emperor Guorong's ox sword, he was a bit reckless and only led 20,000 troops to confront the enemy. The troops were divided into three routes, but the right army suffered a defeat in the first battle, with casualties and a crushing defeat. This battle is crucial for survival and the safety of our country. Life and death depend on this one move. The Zhou army was defeated in the initial battle, with a great setback in morale and a precarious situation. Any slight mistake could lead to a complete collapse on the entire line. Guorong was stationed in the central army, overseeing the battle in front of him, feeling anxious. At that moment, he suddenly received an urgent report from a brocade bag, which contained an iron plaque engraved with a star-shaped pattern, with four characters reading, Heavenly Sha Lone Star. Suddenly, the northeast wind that had been blowing turned into a strong south wind, and the clouds surged. A golden dragon image faintly appeared over the Zhou army, and their morale was greatly boosted. Heaven helps me too. Guo Rong chuckled and frowned, we must win this battle. Chapter 1 Deadly Battle You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Ko Loi Zara Trong Quatrin Lei Text Chapter 2 Who is Fast and Who is Slow You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Nyo family village is the big village of the little fat Nyo family, which can be seen within walking distance from the back of the mountain, but it is difficult to find those who do not recognize it. The two young men, Peng Nyo and Xiao Bai, pointed to a narrow path not far to the east and a rocky road on the riverbank to the west. In fact, you can return to Nyo family village on either side. Just to the east is the main entrance of the mountain fortress, which can be easily reached by taking a small path, to the west is the exit of the back gate of the mountain fortress. There are several bends in the river and many forks. Those who are not familiar with the road cannot easily find a place, either they run into the river in one go, or they may even go around to the edge of the cliff. The strong man in black suddenly rushed towards the two little children on horseback as he spoke. He was about to, one horse, two birds, and knocked the two children over and off, but suddenly turned his horse's head and stopped abruptly to the east. 
his long spear only shook in his hand. The two teenagers felt a blur in front of them and a numbness in their hands. Just now, the sticks and sticks in their respective hands were tightly in each other's hands, and suddenly, shuddered, into the sky. They both flew into the river several tens of meters away. This was truly lightning fast, lightning fast, and startled the two old cows watching from the side. Amidst the roaring of the angry horse, both little children were shocked and lost their souls. Their mouths were wide open and their eyes were wide open, and their hearts were thrusting outwards before they could react. The weapons and sticks in their hands had already been handed over and disappeared without a trace. Wait, I'll go call dad to take care of you. Hang Nyo's soul was startled and he shouted loudly, then spread his legs and ran towards the village. This was like not admitting to oneself, and before he could take a step away with his short and thick legs, the big man touched his little beard, snorted, rode his horse, raised his gun, and hurried towards the eastern path. Xiaonyo, why are you telling him how to get there? Li Xiaobai also regained his senses for a moment and said in a daze. Why can't you tell him? Hang Nyo couldn't answer for a moment and stared at the figure of the person who had disappeared from the dust for a while. It seemed that he couldn't catch up anymore. After a while, he turned his head and said, Does he look like a bad person? You see how fierce he is, with a beard as thick as his eyebrows, as if he has four eyebrows. He doesn't seem like a good person. Maybe he's from Khitan. Li Xiaobai thought for a moment, but couldn't come up with any necessary reason. He casually said, And he'll call you, little cow, as soon as he comes, and there's a possibility he'll come to fight your father. Anyway, we don't know him, how can we talk nonsense? Peng Niu thought for a moment, it seemed like the same thing, but he didn't know who was talking nonsense to him. However, on the other hand, it seems that the little cow in that population is not specifically called himself. After a few thoughts, he pondered and said, you're right. But don't be afraid, no matter how powerful he is, he can't beat my dad. Besides, there are also my big brother and second brother. He suddenly remembered something as he spoke, paused for a moment, and continued, but these are not the most important things now. You haven't even defeated me yet, so you can't call me a little cow. Li Xiaobai seemed to have some sense in what he said, and in a flash of thought, he couldn't help but think of his own parents. But if their reputation in the martial arts world doesn't show up, there shouldn't be anyone coming to their door. They hesitated and said, then we don't care about him, will we continue to compete? Of course, unless you give up. It's still early, and in recent years, there have been many people from outside looking for his village leader's father. Just like this one, Peng Niu was still a bit unsatisfied and hesitated for a while before finally saying. Both boys had some ups and downs in their hearts. Apart from worrying about what might happen, they were more frightened by the person's previous scam. As soon as they thought about the upcoming duel, the two of them finally set their minds and caught a glimpse of their respective sticks and weapons tied side by side, both piercing straight into the riverbank beach. Without much thought, they hurriedly ran towards the shore. Retrieved the stick and washed it in the water, then remembered the person who suddenly charged forward, as fast as the wind and able to move and move freely. It was truly awe-inspiring and awe-inspiring. As long as there was a slight mistake, I was afraid that my own life would be in danger. The two of them felt lingering fear and anxiety, and their newly released hearts began to hang in suspense. Xiao Bai, you said that compared to you, who is stronger between you and that little beard? Peng Niu suddenly thought of this question and said, can you beat him? I, this is also hard to say. Li Xiaobai was stunned for a moment, looking at the rippling river surface. He said in a daze, but if we want to win over you, we naturally have more than enough. Who wouldn't speak big? If you don't use your moves, when will you win over me? Previously, the two of them played and fought, causing Fat Bull to lose and feel a bit numb. Over time, he had already learned one or two skills from Li Xiaobai. Sometimes, when he suddenly used them, he could still surprise him, but in the end, it was still difficult to salvage the defeat. 
Li Xiaobai is also a person who knows how to empathize with and love talents. Seeing this little barbarian ox become more and more courageous as he struggles, he is a prodigious person. It seems that he is really stupid, which is really unbearable. From time to time, he also generously teaches him a few moves through words and deeds. However, Peng Niu doesn't remember to eat or fight. Li Xiaobai patiently guides and earnestly instructs him, one by one, carefully instructing him. Who would have thought that the next day when he wakes up and starts eating, Peng Niu would forget everything and go to his grandmother's house? Just before the start of the duel between the two, Li Xiaobai specially demonstrated the several moves he had repeatedly taught to Fat Bull, and even slowed down the movements that were supposed to be lightning fast. But the bad is also here. If Li Xiaobai should be fast and slow, then it's okay. He slowed down what was supposed to be fast, but in reality, he had to be fast to make it work. This momentary speed and momentary slowness made Fat Bull feel a bit confused in his eyes, unsure whether to be fast or slow. This doubt has been troubling Fat Cow for a long time, and after some thought, he always chooses to do it as soon as possible. However, what he still couldn't figure out was whether he was already fast enough. The words, the world's martial arts are only fast and unbreakable, and, I have no moves, but you have moves, spoken by Li Xiaobai from a little friend he knew before, named Xiao Hei. ZhaoZhuyuan.com two sentences may sound quite intimidating, but it's not difficult to understand when spoken. As for the profound meaning mysterious realm, whether it's him, his friend Xiao Hei, or Fat Bull, it's difficult for anyone to comprehend, so just to add some momentum to themselves, they casually said so. Is it just their three-legged tricks that won't make people laugh out loud? Hang Niu's question caught Li Xiao Bai off guard. He hesitated for a few words, but couldn't figure out why. After a moment of hesitation, he said vaguely, if you could be as fast as that little mustache. Or half of his horse, there's almost a chance you'll beat me. After a few words of conversation, the two of them stayed by the river for a while and were about to return to their original position to make a final decision. Without hesitation, they didn't take a few steps when suddenly they heard the sound of hooves again. A team of more than ten people hurriedly arrived from a hundred or ten zhang away in the north direction. But seeing dust and sand flying, the sound was not small. These people are all dressed in green clothes and strong attire, each holding a sword and a sword. Obviously, they are not good people, and it seems that they are also heading towards the Nyo family village. In no time, when they arrived at the scene, the group of people did not dismount. A middle-aged man in a blue and red robe, with a thin figure and a long horse face, immediately asked, Little doll, which way is Nyo family village going? This way. To this. The two teenagers showed no fear on their faces, only stunned for a moment. They each exchanged glances and then spoke in unison. Peng Niu learned to be obedient this time, and both he and Li Xiaobai pointed towards the river. Humph, the little child is not honest. The middle-aged man with a horse-like face sneered, with a sinister aura still emanating from it. He glanced at the new hoof marks near the ground with a sideways glance, and without further ado, with a dozen horses, he hurried straight towards the eastern path. Finally, he said, look back and see how I'll deal with you. Chapter 3 Spirits Flying Abroad You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xiao Bai, how did they know where to go? I don't know either, maybe they already knew. Watching the group of men in green gallop on horseback, they left in a strange and eerie manner. Amidst the rolling smoke and dust, the two young men were secretly worried and each pondered. Xiaonyo, can your father beat them? Li Xiaobai continued. Of course, my dad can beat ten of them. The fat cow counted with its fingers, and the two little chubby hands took turns counting, only to realize that they couldn't count. The previous matter of whether it was a big cow or a small cow was no longer a concern. After speaking, he vaguely felt uneasy and then said, but. It seems like there are more than ten of them. And what about your big brother, 
big brother, and the second brother. Li Xiaobai also felt that things were not very good. Those people were obviously not in the same group as the previous black-clothed person. Compared to them, the group of green-clothed people seemed to be more vicious, which was a bit strange. Is it difficult to say that today is the birthday of the village leader Nyoda or someone else? Adding the words of big brother and second brother, perhaps that's enough. Peng Nyo has always been quite certain about the martial arts level of his father and two brothers. He has never seen them lose a fight with anyone since he was young, so he naturally has full confidence in their strength. The only difference is that he doesn't have that much confidence in himself. I'm not afraid to tell you, if I had learned some moves from them, you would have become my defeated subordinate long ago. Peng Nyo never worries about food and clothing, always staying at the front door and staying at the back door. He is truly a harmless and kind otaku. Not to mention that his eldest and second brothers are both powerful and skilled characters in this village, his father is even more dominant and invincible, both of whom are renowned practitioners. Speaking of which, if Peng Yo really wants to learn martial arts, how could he need someone to criticize him? This statement is not that he is boasting about himself. It's just that everyone has their own destiny. If only clothes can be stretched out and food can be eaten, why bother practicing any martial arts skills? Because of this, before getting to know Li Xiaobai, the fat cow was still the quiet and obedient one who ate, drank, and played at home. After Li Xiaobai arrived, apart from eating, drinking, and urinating as usual, the carefree and stable days of fat cow were gone forever. In order to defeat Li Xiaobai, Fat Bull also wanted to go and learn some powerful killing moves from his father and brother. However, Fat Cow has a simple mind and doesn't have much interest in these fights and killings. And it's mainly because I'm afraid that when I make a move, I'll kill the opponent, who is as thin as a pole. That way, even if I win, it doesn't seem to have much meaning. Moreover, for his chubby cow, his father and brother's fierce killing moves cannot be achieved overnight, so it's better to pick up some ready-made ones to practice. His parents and older brothers saw him, a delicious and lazy little chubby cow, suddenly become much more active than before. They were too happy to stop him and Li Xiaobai, these two little brats, from fooling around. But this is also because everyone has their own aspirations, and not everyone has unique talents. They can learn whatever they want, and some people are not born with the same skills as martial arts practitioners, so it is difficult to force them to succeed. Despite being diligent in learning and practicing, Fat Cow has been practicing his three moves and two moves for several months. If he really starts using them, he will still forget about things and things. He is a bit careless and doesn't look good. There are over a hundred people in the Nyo family stronghold, including the elderly, weak, women, and children. Apart from the Nyo family stronghold leader and the two young strongholds leaders, there are at least dozens who can fight and carry them. The black-clothed person and the dozen or so blue-clothed people look fierce, and it is unlikely that they will be able to turn up any flowers. Besides, these two groups of people may not necessarily be here to cause trouble. Perhaps they are just here to congratulate the leader of Nyoda village or some other person on their birthday. You're also saying. Li Xiaobai still felt a little uneasy in his heart, and he didn't want to argue or give up in words. After a moment of contemplation, he said, if we add you and me as generals, then we'll be foolproof. Can we still compare? Peng Niu inexplicably felt a boost in his spirits, and his thoughts had wandered to his home, but he still couldn't make up his mind. Can you win again even more? No matter what happened, Li Xiaobai still wanted to go back early and see the excitement. He just said, go back first and take a look. Let's find another chance to compete next time. With these words in mind, the two of them couldn't care about any duels as they thought there was going to be a hot commotion in the village. Then, they each held hands with a cow and followed the footsteps of the previous group of people, circling the Dompa mountain road back to the village. After walking for a while, as soon as I turned to the entrance of the valley on the back of the mountain, I suddenly heard the sound of hooves coming from the small path ahead. 
However, the black-clothed and bearded person who had been horseback before hurriedly ran over, and no one else was chasing him from behind. Little doll, stop quickly. The strong man in black was still the little mustache holding a long gun, but he had a big long knife pierced through his chest, and his clothes were stained red with blood. Seeing the two young men about to rush back, he shouted from a distance, Don't go back. His voice was hoarse and weak, and compared to his previous arrogance and grandeur, he was somewhat different. After finishing this sentence, he suddenly spat out blood with a loud moan, became unstable, and fell off his horse with one head. He rolled several steps, threw his spear aside, and fell on the roadside, making it difficult to get up. It didn't seem like he was acting. He also took several cuts on his horses but, bleeding incessantly all the way, didn't run a few times, and then stumbled and fell to the side, on the brink of death. What's wrong with him? Can't it be called, Dad? Dot. The two little children were originally playing and joking all the way from stick to stick. When they looked at this posture at Shuyuan www.jiaoshuyuan.com, they were all startled and lost in place. Among the six gods, no one thought of going forward to help them up. I don't know, go and take a look. After all, Li Xiaobai had more courage. After looking at the fat cow, without waiting for him to answer, he pulled the cow rope and walked towards the person step by step. Just a few steps ahead of him, the man suddenly flipped over on his own, a bit disheveled and disheveled, and a bit confused and disoriented. He covered his chest with one hand and raised the other hand slightly. He let out a loud scream from his bloody mouth. Don't. Don't go back. Little beard, what did you say? Li Xiaobai was momentarily stunned when he saw that the other party was afraid they might not be able to go back. He didn't care about his past grievances and quickly asked with concern, Are you okay? What happened? Why don't you go back? You speak quickly. Xiaonyo. San Lang, is that you? The man in black had a hazy look in his eyes, and he couldn't see clearly. His words were easy to say, but he answered a bit off topic, listen. Don't go back, don't go back. Peng Niu had already hurried over at this moment. He didn't take it seriously when he called his trumpet and trumpet together. He knew it was about himself and inexplicably felt that something was going wrong. He just said, how can I not go back? My parents will worry. Besides, where will I go if I don't go back? What will I eat? Why don't you let me go back? There was a bit more talk, and finally I got to the point. The black-clad man was either impatient or really dying. After hearing these words, he suddenly closed his eyes, breathed a sigh of anger, and lay down again. Chapter 4 Traitors Must Die You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Xiao Bai, has he died? I don't know either. Now the two little children were so anxious that they couldn't help feeling a little flustered for a moment, but didn't dare to be careless. Before Li Xiaobai approached, he had been thinking about whether to take advantage of the little beard's unpreparedness and tie him up with a cow rope. Seeing this situation, he thought it over and continued, I shouldn't die so soon. Having strengthened his courage, he immediately walked up to the person behind him and helped them up again. When he touched his nose, it seemed like he was still gasping for breath. He quickly shook his body to wake him up and speak clearly. Don't die so quickly for now. The chubby cow also approached at this moment, shouting loudly. The man in black was already full of energy, perhaps he had regained some souls for the two of them. It was easy for him to wake up, open his eyes, and forcefully lift his mind. His mouth was babbling and his fingers were drawing, and it took him a while to explain the reason roughly. Simply put, it turns out that this person was an old acquaintance of the cow stronghold lord in the martial arts world. Recently, he accidentally learned that the enemy of the cow stronghold lord, the group of people in green clothes who were going to come before, was not favorable to him. He came from a long distance to inform the cow stronghold lord, so that he could be on guard. At the same time, he came here to assist in the battle. 
Unexpectedly, as soon as he arrived, those people in green clothes followed behind, without saying a few words, and Schwamm convenient immediately started to move his hands. In the melee, there were casualties on all sides, and he himself was also injured quite a bit. The leader of the Nyo village, who was still struggling to support himself, felt grateful for his kindness and also remembered his young son, Sanlang, who was still playing outside. Seeing that he was already struggling to protect himself, he asked the black-clothed man to find an opportunity to leave quickly, and no matter what, he must bring the little cow with him, quickly stay away from this place, and never come back. Faced with such a heavy trust, the man in black also had to accept it. However, during the charge to break through, he was hit with a fatal blow on his body. At this moment, he also risked his life to break out of the encirclement and only managed to catch his breath before rushing over. You're talking nonsense, it's impossible. Peng Niu was stunned when he heard it, as if he was listening to someone else's story. How could he not believe that such a thing would happen in his own home? In a rough and somewhat panicked voice, he said, My dad, my brother, and the others, how could they not defeat those people? You must be lying. It seemed that he had suffered a great deal and couldn't help but cry. Xiaonyo, please calm down first. Li Xiaobai also felt a bit panicked when he heard it. He didn't know what to say for a moment, but to his surprise, the little beard didn't speak nonsense. He was afraid that the fat cow would do something foolish, so he quickly said, Your dad and his team are so powerful, maybe. They should be fine. Peng Niu thought it seemed the same, but after howling a few times, he stopped and wiped away the tears that were about to come out. He turned his eyes towards home and suddenly became stunned. He reached out and pointed, saying in a daze, It's on fire. Li Xiaobai turned his head to take a look. To be precise, there was smoke coming from the direction of the Shanjai, and thick smoke was rolling in. It sounded just like a fire, and he couldn't help but be stunned. Now it seemed like everything was right, and impossible things had become true. The sky before dark suddenly seemed gloomy and gloomy, and the surroundings suddenly became a bit dark. Peng Niu was like a bolt from the blue, frozen in place for a long time, tears swirling in his eyes. The man in black easily confessed the situation, his energy had already been depleted, and he even closed his eyes and remained motionless. I have already swallowed my breath, but I don't know if I'm dead or not. It seems like I can't live anymore. Dad, Mom. Peng Niu was stunned for a moment, then he didn't care about anything. He looked at the person on the ground, through the wooden stick, and casually pulled out a long sword that was deeply pierced into the body of the person. He held it tightly in his hand, shouted loudly, and ran towards the village faster than anything else. Upon hearing his shout, Li Xiaobai immediately regained his senses. Thinking that his parents were still in the village, his heart skipped a beat and he couldn't care about anything else. He immediately got up and wanted to run back. As soon as I took a step, I suddenly remembered something and turned my head to look at the person. Little Beard. Great Xia, may I ask your name? The man in black just took the knife off his body, and blood gushed out. He couldn't help but open his mouth and make a sound. His eyes opened wide again and again, and the last bit of his strength had been exhausted, making it difficult to close his open eyes. At this moment, he didn't know if he had heard it or not, as if he had let out a low growl in his mouth. The bloody corners of his mouth were slightly raised, with a faint smile. But there seems to be a hint of bitterness in this smile. Li Xiaobai turned around and reached out his finger to explore his two curled beards, but couldn't breathe any more. He caught a glimpse of his raised finger still pointing straight towards the direction of the valley mouth. Knowing that he was on his deathbed, he still remembered what he had entrusted and wanted himself and the fat cow to run away quickly. But now, how could there be any reason to retreat from the battlefield? If you don't say it, then I'll call you Little Beard. Li Xiaobai felt uneasy in his heart and muttered to himself, expressing his gratitude to the other party for their kindness. He praised him as a brave man and said that he wiped his hand in front of him, closed his eyes, 
and casually grabbed a handful of mud with grass on the ground to cover his body. It was considered a hasty burial for him. He then stood up, clasped his fists, and bowed respectfully to him. Peng Niu has never run so fast in his life, but he has not yet run to Zhang away. Little cow, ride a cow. After finishing his work, Li Xiaobai caught a glimpse of the bloodstained long gun with a mustache on the roadside. He casually threw away his wooden stick and took a few steps forward to pick it up. Suddenly, he became more spirited and shouted loudly. Upon hearing these words, Peng Niu suddenly realized and thought to himself that he needed to conserve some energy in the face of a formidable enemy. Why not ride a cow? He paused under his feet, let out a sound, and then found a mud mound high ground. He kicked his feet and climbed onto the back of a cow that Li Xiaobai had rushed to. But seeing Li Xiaobai's angry eyebrows raised, holding a long spear and riding with an indescribable aura, the chubby ox also felt a great boost in his spirit. He slapped the ox's buttocks with a knife and followed with a loud, driving sound. The journey was smooth and unobstructed, and the two old cows also knew the way. It seemed that they were even more eager to rush than the two little children. In less than half a quarter, I turned around and arrived at the entrance of the mountain fortress. Smoke filled the surroundings, and visibility was not very high. Amidst the flames, cries, howls, and sounds of killing echoed in my ears. The sound was terrifying and heart-wrenching. Two young men frowned and glared angrily, urging their cows to gallop. As soon as they entered the gate, they caught the eye of Zhang Shanfeng and Feng Qingyang, two village guards lying in a pool of blood. The bodies of the guards were brutally sealed in the throat with a knife, and their death was relatively peaceful and not terrifying, but it was truly unbearable to see. A few steps further forward, under the blazing flames of the buildings on both sides, the two brothers who lived closest to the village, Xiao Feng and Guo Jing, collapsed in the middle of the road, both taking their lives with a sword. It seems that he heard the news and came to help, but was tragically killed, which is truly heartbreaking. Taking a few more steps, there were also several older brothers and seniors, such as Zhang Wuji and Ling Hu Chong, whose bodies were brutally slaughtered and bleeding all over the ground, which was truly abhorrent. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon in Nyocha Village, in addition to the previous few hundred-year-old heroes, there are also uncles and uncles such as Xiong Qigong and Zhou Batong along the way, as well as Huang Yao Lion and Ouyang Crazy. They have all been known for their unparalleled lives and ranked in no particular order, all of whom have been lying dead on the ground without exception. How can they not teach people to be heartbroken and mourn? Not to mention that the two little children are already soulless and have some difficulty holding their swords and guns, like falling into a nightmare, how can they not believe that what they see in front of them will be true? Even the two old scalpers under their seats, walking with excitement and excitement all the way, inexplicably shed tears on their faces. The Fat Cow family mansion is located in the central area of the village, and it is not difficult to find the Shuyuan www.chaoshuyuan.com. Soon two people and two cows turn to the gate outside the hospital, surrounded by fireworks. At one sight, they saw Nyo Dalong lying on his back at the door, as strong as an ox, but still bleeding in his mouth. On one hand, there was half a blood-stained Xiaobing, baked cake in griddle. It seemed that he was poisoned before he could finish eating it. Entering the inner courtyard, one could see corpses lying on the ground, blood-stained, and casualties difficult to calculate. One of them was an eight-foot-tall man with a majestic and imposing body, a cold light in his eyes, and a body as strong as a heavenly lion and a pichio. He was none other than Nyo Erlang, but he had already broken his hands, feet, and brain, which was simply unbearable. Peng Nyo's heart and soul were shattered, with tears in his eyes and red eyes. Before he could cry out, he suddenly heard his father, the leader of Nyo village, shouting loudly in the courtyard, Little Nyo, why are you coming back? The leader of the Nyojai village is also tall and muscular, with a large arm and a round waist. However, at this moment, he is also scarred and covered in blood stains. 
He is holding a large fork to support his body and standing at the door of the burning house, standing in a stalemate with several trapped men in green clothes around him. It seems that he can't hold on for long. When he saw the fat cow riding on the cow and suddenly came back, he couldn't help but scream out loud. Dad, I need to come back and kill them all with you. Peng Yo answered and glared angrily at the few people in green and asked, Why do you want to kill my father, my brother, and the others? Why? The group of more than ten people in green clothes who had come before had already suffered more than half of the casualties, leaving only three to five disabled. The red-robed horse-faced man, who was the leader, did not seem to be seriously injured. At this moment, he was pointing his sword directly at the head of the Nyojai village. He did not expect the two little children to suddenly appear, and he didn't pay much attention to them. He snorted and smiled, saying. Why is there so much? I can only tell you, traitors must die. Chapter 5 Slaying Cattle and Destroying the Fortress You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Traitor, what traitor? Pang Yo couldn't help but ignore the many things. With a blush in his eyes, he patted the cow's back and swung his big knife as he rushed forward, shouting loudly, Let go of my dad. Little cow, hurry up. The leader of the Nyojai village didn't expect this little cow, who has always been able to stay still, to be so impulsive at this moment. But it was no different from dying at this moment. He was a bit panicked and quickly called out in panic, Don't worry about me, don't come over. Li Xiaobai didn't expect Fat Cow to be so reckless. It was already too late to stop him. He was stunned for a moment and couldn't help but blurt out, Little Cow, be careful. It's better to come. The few people in green clothes were also somewhat unexpected. At the same time, with a chill, the horse-faced man led by them glanced at the little brat who couldn't even hold the knife firmly. He didn't pay much attention to it and just smiled faintly, it saves me from looking again. As soon as he finished speaking, the chubby cow shouted loudly and had already swung his knife to cut it. However, his sword, which still carried blood, looked no different from others. Not to mention, it sealed the throat with just one knife and cut a person in half, at least it could make a cut. How could it seem different at this critical moment? With a clang sound, the person in green at the forefront sliced out with a knife, and the light of the knife flashed. First, the horn of the barbarian bull, who was at the forefront of the charge, was almost completely cut off. Then, the knife in the hands of the chubby bull was cut in half, like paper paste, and was cut in two pieces. For a moment, the horn and the broken knife flew to the ground together. The chubby cow felt a numbness in its hand and the knife in its hand became lighter. It reacted to the general's reaction, but the person became unstable and fell off the cow. Coincidentally, when he fell to the ground, his chubby body happened to press against the slightly upturned and just now sharpened horn of a cow. The one-foot-long horn was several inches long, and with a splash, it pierced directly into one side of his chubby waist, causing blood to gush out. He suddenly felt pain in his stomach and struggled to get up. Suddenly, he felt a blur in front of him, and his body only straightened before collapsing again. Before closing his eyes, he tilted his head and glanced into the room. In a daze, he saw his mother lying in front of the door with two eyes open, but still motionless and dead early in the morning. That was the beautiful wife, Mrs. Nyo, whom his father had described as his beloved wife. Only then did he close his eyes, and it seemed difficult to live. Little cow. Fat cow. The lord of Nyojai and Li Xiaobai were both stunned, staring in amazement, and couldn't help but exclaim at the same time. This was not over yet, and the two of them had just shouted out. The bull had lost a love horn in pain and felt a bit empty on its back for a moment. It didn't feel right at first, so it didn't take two steps. It quickly turned around and glared angrily at the bull's eyes. It jumped up its legs, went crazy, and headed straight towards the person who had swung a knife at it just now. The man in green seemed to be still immersed in the secret joy of easily slaying the cow with the enemy Xia Pengwa before. 
how could he expect the old cow to come back with a comeback blow? Moreover, he was originally injured quite a bit. As soon as he realized it, his buttocks were suddenly pushed up by the head of the old barbarian ox, and he flew straight towards the leader of the cattle village. The owner of the Nyojai village has come so well, there is no room for error. The ox fork is only one fork, and it has already deeply penetrated two holes in his chest, lifting the newcomer high in mid-air. In such a way, at the moment when the man in blue took off from the top, his sharp knife naturally swung back, and the tip of the knife cut through, blinding one eye of the unicorn cow. This person is known as the Quick Knife Heavenly King, originally from a background in slaughtering cattle. With a slaughtering knife in his hand, he can effortlessly untie a whole cow into a head and a tail, with bones and flesh separated and neat. Who would have thought he would die today under an old cow and a fork? The old barbarian ox turned into a one-horned one-eyed ox and launched a rampage. Even the heavenly king Lousy was not afraid and turned his head and kicked his legs, charging fiercely towards the other few people in blue. Unexpectedly, he was cut to death by a random knife after only a few attempts, and the ox's blood flew wildly. He was already dead on the spot in the blink of an eye. These few twists and turns have been happening one after another, which no one had anticipated. The leader of the Nyo village killed the enemy in one fell swoop, but before he could breathe a sigh of relief, he was about to take advantage of the chaos and pick up his beloved son, Xiao Nyo, to examine his injuries. The horse-faced man had a gloomy face and didn't say much. With a sword like a snake spitting out a message, he stabbed him directly. This person has the surname Qin and the name Shou. They have a well-known nickname called Dongfang Wubai. They are vicious and ruthless, and they roam the rivers and lakes. It is said that they have never been defeated, and it is unknown whether they are exaggerating or not. But it is undeniable that a three-foot-long sword arrived in his hand, like an embroidery needle in a young girl's hand. When used, it was gentle with strength, swift and unparalleled. Many top-notch experts who came to challenge him under his arrogant nickname have all become his undead under the sword. The leader of Nyojai was seriously injured in multiple places, and just now the fork had exhausted all its strength. At this moment, he also launched a fierce attack without daring to be careless, and threw the body of the person on the Nyo fork as a shield horizontally to block it. Unexpectedly, the sword light flashed by, and the corpse split into two. It split and flew away, and the horse-faced man swung his sword quickly and swept over again. The leader of the Nyo village waved his fork and fought hard to resist. The few men in green killed the cow, calmed down, and immediately surrounded him again. In the blink of an eye, the number of deaths and injuries increased, and blood and flesh flew everywhere. Li Xiaobai said he was not afraid that it was fake, but he never thought about running away with his butt in his mouth. In a daze, he felt as if intoxicated and his soul was swaying. He had no time to take care of many things. He slapped the cow's back and swung his long spear randomly. At this moment, he was about to rush forward and rescue the fat cow that had fallen on the ground before speaking again. Who would have thought that the old cow under the seat would run for a step, but then turn around and turn around, avoiding everyone in front of the house and rushing towards the backyard. Old idiot, where are you running around? At this moment, Xiao Bai was so anxious that he was smoking. Without this fierce bull mount, he couldn't exert his rightful power. He was a bit restless for a moment, and his long spear hit the bull's back indiscriminately. He cursed loudly, your bully brother is so brave, he even killed people by cutting and dismembering. Didn't you see it? How could you retreat from the battlefield? You cowardly and foolish bully, shrinking your head, so timid and afraid of death. What kind of hero and good bully are you? Go back to me. Thinking about the situation where Pang Nyo bravely went to the disaster but suffered a tragic death, while cursing wildly, he couldn't help but cry out and kept pulling the cow rope back. That old scalper couldn't say a word, couldn't refute him, and didn't care if he pulled the rope randomly. His four legs were full of strength, 
and he only focused on running forward desperately. Nyojia village is located in a secluded valley, with beautiful mountains and rivers, and lush vegetation. When viewed from a high altitude, the entire village looks somewhat like a big bull with a raised tail and a raised head. Zhaozhuyuan.com Every household in the village is strong with cattle and sheep, which can be said to live and work in peace and harmony with the world. The owner of Nyojai is a well-known cattle farmer from all over the village. There are not many others, but these fat cows are actually a large group that are sold far outside the village. Not to mention the free distribution to dozens of households in the neighborhood for adoption, he still has dozens of cows in this cowsheet in his backyard. The villagers of the village respect him more than fear him, and it is not without reason that his nickname as the Bull Demon King comes from this. Li Xiaobai and his family have recently moved in and are not yet qualified for adoption. Unless they are herding cattle for the owner of the cattle village and have completed at least one year of cattle breeding, they may only enjoy such treatment if there is a production of calves. The young Bai also aimed for this small goal, diligently cutting grass and grazing cattle for the leader of the cow village every day, rain or shine. If nothing unexpected happens, it won't take a few months to successfully obtain the adoption rights of a calf, and from then on, enter the elite class and reach the pinnacle of life. Who would have thought that at this critical moment, this incident would have happened? The owner of the Nyojai said it's not big, but it's better to have a simple and elegant decoration layout. In addition to the cow sheet, the backyard garden also has everything from chicken coops to duck cages. But at this moment, the fire started up and smoke spread everywhere, and from time to time, several corpses of humans and animals could be seen on the ground, which was very messy and lost its usual charm. Along the way, chickens flew and dogs jumped, took two turns, and arrived at the cow sheet. Except for half of those who have already left the shed, the fireworks are glaring and pungent, but fortunately in the spacious and ventilated cow sheet, there are still more than a dozen strong cows still stubbornly holding on, each one tall and powerful, all of which are good examples. As soon as the old scalper arrived in front of the shed, he stopped abruptly and didn't say much. He only let out a long, moo, sound, and more than ten cows in the shed moved in response, breaking free from the shackles of the cow rope, jumping out with all four feet, and in the blink of an eye, they all gathered around. Together with this old scalper, it turned out to be the king among them who led the way. Chapter 6 Dongfang Wubai You are listening at NovelFull.audio Li Xiaobai spat out a few fragrant curses at the intersection. In a daze, his eyes couldn't help but brighten up, and he suddenly thought of something. With the help of these powerful and majestic bulls, why worry about the formidable enemy not being eliminated? Patting the cow's neck, he muttered to himself and said, Old stupid cow, isn't that right? Old cow king, you are really very clever. It's not in vain for me to feed you so much grass. Why didn't I think about it just now? I misunderstood you. The leader of the Nyojai village persevered for a moment, with several new injuries added to his body. If it weren't for the hope that his precious son, Xiao Nyo, would still have a chance to escape this place as much as possible, he might have fallen to the ground and struggled to rise. At this point, he was surrounded by one person from each other around him, facing a dilemma and reaching a dead end, with some dying and others struggling to survive. Suddenly, I heard the sound of hooves, approaching the backyard as if thousands of troops and horses were rushing towards me. The head of the Nyojai suddenly thought of something and couldn't help but feel a shock. He fought back and received a knife, but couldn't avoid it. As he saw the horse-faced man Qin Shou stab him in the chest with a sword, Nian Shan immediately picked a fork on the steel fork and used his last strength to push the other person back with the sword, pushing him all the way to a large pillar in the courtyard corridor. The two forks were tightly stuck on his thin neck, and he shouted angrily. Dong Fang Wubai, I have been retired from the martial arts world for many years. Why don't you let me go? You killed my whole family, and today you will be completely defeated, dying under my old ox fork. You betrayed the organization and have been carefree for so many years, don't you still deserve to die? 
Qin Shou was calm and composed, and fortunately, he reacted quickly just now and drew his sword back in time, otherwise he might have been injured by the blade. At this moment, his neck was stuck and pressed against the pillar, feeling a dilemma for a moment. He still calmly and confidently said, I've come to help you too. At least I'll leave you a whole body. Shouldn't you be grateful to me? As he was speaking, the sound of ox hooves was approaching. At the corner of the house wall, the young white man rode the old ox and made a quick turn. Angry and waving his long spear, he rushed towards him, shouting loudly, Fat cow, I'm here to avenge you. Behind him, there were more than ten strong and fierce oxen following one after another. For a moment, they were full of bull energy and rushed towards each other. Hang Myo didn't know whether he had regained his soul with this sound or awakened by the sound. He sat up from the ground, rubbed his eyes, and responded vaguely, Little White. You're really a cow. At the same time, several men in green were about to pounce and dismember the leader of Nyoda village with a random knife. At first glance, the formation was somewhat ominous, and it was not advisable to retreat at this moment. They quickly turned around and swung their knives towards each other, intending to intimidate and stop them. Xiaonyo. Are you okay? Li Xiaobai hurriedly arrived, and unexpectedly, Fat Cow suddenly regained his soul. However, he was truly startled by this moment and couldn't help but tug at the cow rope before blurting out a question. Surprises erupted, but of course, this revenge still had to be avenged. He didn't have time to talk to Fat Cow too much. Seeing that the three men in green dared to resist stubbornly, he thought about how he could add an old cow with just one shot. However, he couldn't withstand the opponent's many swords. Fortunately, he had more cows, so he waved his long spear straight at him and said. They killed your brother Nyo, take revenge on your brother Nyo. This command seemed to have been spoken by the old ox, and he was only conveying it on his behalf. Before he could finish speaking, he saw that the cow brother on the ground, who had lost a corner, had been dismembered in disarray. He was all skin and bones still cold, and there were three guys wielding bloody knives wielding them profusely. But who was the culprit? A dozen or so wild cows had already kicked their hooves randomly, shaking their heads and horns as they charged forward horizontally. Don't be fooled by the fact that this cow eats grass, it may not necessarily lose to a lion or tiger in critical moments. A dozen or so cows are also full of bull-like instincts, fearless of the heavens and the earth, and seem to know some formations. Just as they took a few steps, suddenly the cows split into two paths and formed a circle, trapping the three of them in the middle, taking turns to constantly bump their heads inside. Those three men in green are all medium to strong. One can at least withstand three cows, but they cannot withstand the overwhelming power of these cows. Moreover, each one is still a real cow. With an unreasonable charge and a fierce assault, the three of them only swung and slashed a few times. Two of them had already been knocked to the ground, and the knives in their hands flew somewhere. Amidst the panic, one of these two individuals was crawling with all their feet facing the sky and kicking their legs, while the other was searching for teeth with their buttocks facing the sky and the ground. Then, they were trampled on by the cow's hooves, causing their intestines, brains, and urine to flow out, and in the blink of an eye, they all died. Another one, seeing that the situation was getting worse, had the delusion of using his flying feet lightness skill to run away. Unexpectedly, as soon as he started and his two hairy legs took off, he was suddenly hit by a wild cow on the back buttocks, causing his entire body to suddenly fly towards the wall of the courtyard. With a loud bang, he was firmly hit and killed. A few wastes. In the blink of an eye, there was chaos again, and several subordinates were injured one after another. Qin Shou, who was still stuck on the pillar, was obviously surprised and couldn't help but snort angrily. Good kid, hurry up and drive the cow over to me. The leader of the Nyojai heard the voice of the fat cow and only said that he had listened poorly. He caught a glimpse of him sitting in a daze, seemingly unable to die, I saw the young white dot collar worker come back with a cow. 
After a while, I had already dealt with several strong enemies. I was pleasantly surprised for a moment, and almost forgot that there was still a big enemy that had not been eliminated. It was easy for me to recover, but I didn't have time to say more. At this moment, I hurriedly said. As long as you kill this person, I'll reward you with a cow, no, ten or a hundred heads will do. I am determined to have Li Xiaobai drive the herd of cattle and trample him and his opponents to death. I would rather die together than let the other party escape. Li Xiaobai looked at this and realized that it was not a matter of many cows. Besides, to deal with that mere horse-faced man, why do these many cows need to personally fight? Just now there was a battle between humans and cows, and it was easy to win. However, several strong cows were also wounded and killed on the spot, with significant casualties. In addition to feeling guilty, he didn't want to bother these big brother cows to appear anymore. In a moment of thought, he said, Master Cow, don't be afraid. It's not too late to talk about the cow's matter. I'll handle this person. As he spoke, he jumped off the cow, waved his long spear, let out a shout, and rushed to the man with a hoarse face a few times before suddenly stabbing him. Stinky kid, seek death. If Li Xiaobai had really driven the herd of cows to trample on them, Qin Shou would have no choice but to retreat. A generation of top martial arts experts might have died under the hooves of these cows. ZhaoZhuiyuan.com at this moment, as the young man dared to charge his gun at him, Qin Shou was more angry than surprised and didn't take it seriously. He thought to himself, I'll just stand here and don't move. How can you handle me? With just two eyes and one glare, as he spoke, he swept his sword horizontally and cut off the head of the long spear that Li Xiaobai had stabbed. He then said. Do you know who I am? With just your carelessness, you still want to move me. If you want to die, I can give you a good time. Li Xiaobai is good at speaking, but he has never engaged in any real combat or killing with anyone. Just now, a shot was shot, mostly out of righteous indignation. He didn't think too much about anything else, and was afraid that a shot would poke a big hole in the person. He didn't dare to look too much. Unexpectedly, this was supposed to be a deadly blow, but it didn't even touch the opponent's fur. With a good shot, he quickly chopped off the head of the gun. This was quite unexpected for him. In a moment of shock, he couldn't help but freeze in place. He looked at the gun with no gun head in his hand and couldn't speak. The world's martial arts are only fast and unbreakable. Peng Yo saw that Li Xiaobai was motionless and only said that his friend had been stabbed to death. In a panic, he quickly got up and picked up a large knife, rushing towards the horse-faced man at the fastest speed he could reach, shouting loudly. This move, the bull goes out of the shed, has also been repeatedly pointed out by Li Xiaobai. It may seem ordinary, but if played properly, it is actually powerful and unstoppable, targeting the enemy's vital points with a swift and fierce attack, killing the enemy with one blow and invincible. Unexpectedly, the horse-faced man had superior skills and acted unreasonably fast. The sword light flashed in an instant, and with a clang, the knife in Fat Cow's hand had not yet touched the opponent's edge and had already been thrown into the sky. At the same time, with a pop sound, the horse-faced man's sword had already pierced his chest. Chapter 7 Invincible Defeat You are listening at NovelFull.audio Little Cow Little Cow At this moment, the Lord of Nyojai and Li Xiaobai were shocked to the extreme. They were both stunned and couldn't help but shout in unison. The leader of Nyo village was even more heartbroken, his body and legs were limp, and he immediately spat out a large mouthful of blood. In a fit of shock and anger, Li Xiaobai couldn't take much care of himself. Taking advantage of the gap before the horse-faced man's long sword could be drawn out, he held a gun stick with a slanted pointed head in his hand and stabbed it straight into his chest. Then he thought to himself, who cares who you are? Release the fat cow. Xiaobai, I, did my move just now make it fast enough, right? Peng Niu took his last breath and half opened his eyes to look at Li Xiaobai, 
then said in a daze. Yes, yes. Fast enough. Li Xiaobai couldn't help but wet his eyes with tears and said with a tearful tone, Xiao Niu, no. Din Yu. You won, you are the most amazing. Well, that's good. Hang Niu tried hard to squeeze out a smile, and a shallow dimple appeared on his chubby face. His gaze was a bit scattered. However, I. I have a bigger, bigger move. As he spoke, he suddenly pulled out the bull horn that was still stuck at his waist, took a step forward, and the long sword pierced through his chest, suddenly piercing the tip of the horn straight into the other side of the horse-faced man's chest. Qin Shou was momentarily negligent, but unexpectedly took the opportunity to cut off his gun and pierce Li Xiaobai's lungs. In shock and anger, he opened his mouth without saying much, let alone puncturing the heart of the cow horn. A mouthful of blood gushed out, staring intently at the two chubby and skinny little children in front of him. He never imagined that he would die in the hands of these two stinky young men who were still wet. In shock, he only murmured. I, I am Dong. Dong. Before he could finish speaking, he immediately closed his eyes, lost his breath, and couldn't continue speaking. Dong Fang Wu Bai, ha uh. The cowherd lord, who was equally shocked and outraged, was also surprised to see this happen. As he spoke, he couldn't help but laugh and say, I didn't expect you to die in front of me. Turning his head, he looked at his enemy, the chubby cow who had already lost his life. When he wanted to say something more, he couldn't get up in one breath and was already dead in the blink of an eye. He stood up and died with a smile on his face. Among these two big, two small, and four people, only Li Xiaobai remained unscathed. For a moment, he was also in a state of shock and confusion, and even now he couldn't figure out what was going on. Regarding this leader of the Nyojai, besides hearing that he is very capable of fighting, Li Xiaobai doesn't know much about him. The so dot called traitors and so on are all shrouded in mist, a bit confused. Looking at the two big and one small individuals around him who have already gone to the underworld, he felt a mixture of grief and fear. This time, both the enemy and the bitter master have settled the accounts, and he has no idea after much thought. Where should he go and find someone to reason with? In a daze, the horse-faced man suddenly opened his eyes, snorted angrily, opened his mouth word by word, and said in a strange voice. I, how? Maybe, I'll lose. With a sudden shock, he widened his eyes and effortlessly broke free from the fork on his neck, pushing down the three people in front of him. He held his long sword, along with a broken gun and horn inserted into his body, but stumbled and walked towards the herd of cows ahead. Amidst the flames everywhere, the group of about ten cows were about to stop and exit in an orderly manner. Unexpectedly, a guy dressed in a red robe, with long horns, a horse face, and a weapon suddenly rushed in. Seeing someone swaying and walking arrogantly, it seems like they are openly provoking. Isn't this a lack of confidence in their eyes? A dozen or so cows didn't say much to him, but instead, they bumped and stomped around him, hitting and stomping on him repeatedly, crushing him to pieces and leaving no bones. Li Xiaobai might as well overthrow the horse-faced man to the ground and say that he has come back to life. In shock, he just got up and saw this scene, which made him even more horrified and shocked. He couldn't help but shiver and be stunned. Just as he was lost in thought, the large pillar against which the horse-faced man was leaning suddenly snapped inward, and the courtyard corridor that was burning on top collapsed with a loud bang. In the blink of an eye, the owner of the cattle village and the chubby cow baby were buried together. As soon as this side collapsed, the surrounding corridors and buildings, which had been burned down for a while, followed by falling walls and falling walls. For a moment, ash flew and tiles shattered, and fireworks erupted everywhere. Little cow. Big cow. Li Xiaobai was stunned again and blurted out a voice. The bull and bull team made another contribution, but did not show off. As the houses collapsed and burned everywhere, there was nothing important for them to do at that moment. 
they only mooed a few times at Li Xiaobai, urging him to flee quickly. Then they dispersed and left, bidding farewell and fleeing for their lives. Li Xiaobai saw that the fat cow family was also buried together in the same house, so it didn't seem too bad. It's not possible not to leave in this situation. He was lost in thought for a while, as if wandering in a dream. Suddenly, he thought of his parents who were still unsure of where they were and whether they were safe. He couldn't help but be shocked and said, Dad, Mom. Leaping up and grabbing the way, he hurried straight to the back door of the backyard. The next door to the head of the Nyojai village, the back of the Nyojai village, happens to be the last single wooden house on the tail of the Nyojai cow, leaning against the mountain and water, which is where the Li Xiaobai family lives. The young man quickly ran and shouted as he ran. On both sides of the road, there were volcanoes and a sea of corpses everywhere, and he was also in a state of fire and couldn't handle it. In no time, I arrived at home, but it was empty inside and outside. How could there be a loving father and mother? Daddy, Grandma. Where are you? The young man was worried and looked at the green water flowing eastward in front of the house. He was lost for a while, but suddenly heard the faint cries in the mountains. Without much thought, he hurriedly ran towards the back mountain with his legs crossed. Along the way, we still saw many corpses of the villagers who had fallen to the ground and suffered casualties, some of whom were still wailing and shouting. The young man recognized several of them as his neighbor, Qing De Gu and Guan Shi Gu, as well as Aunt Pan and Aunt Zhang, who were diagonally opposite the door, but he didn't know if they were alive or dead. Li Xiaobai's heart was burning with anxiety, and in his surprise, he could only ignore it for a moment. His feet moved even faster, and soon halfway up the mountain, he faintly heard Lady Yang's voice coming from the back mountain. Go ahead. I'll jump, you'll jump too, right? Mrs. Yang is the wife of Uncle Yang, who lives in seclusion and enjoys beekeeping in the back mountain. She went to the Shuyuan website www.jiaoshuyuan.com to find the nickname Dragon Girl. Recently, Li Xiaobai also stole honey from their house a few times to eat. Uncle Yang's surname is Yang, and he has lost one arm. He is low.key and unassuming, and the villagers call him a one-armed hero. However, not many people know his specific background. At this moment, it was already dusk, with the setting sun and the howling mountain breeze. Uncle Yang Guiyang and Lady Yang were standing together on the edge of a cliff on the mountainside, their sleeves fluttering and looking at each other. After hearing his beloved wife's infinitely tender words, Uncle Yang reached out and touched her fair and plain face, stroking away the strands of messy green hair on her smiling face. With a slightly sinister smile, he nodded gently and firmly, saying. Dragon, you jump, I jump too. We will never, never part ways. Can't jump. Li Xiaobai had just dashed out of the mountains and forests, and upon seeing this scene from afar, he only felt that it was not very good and couldn't help but shout loudly. However, as soon as the words were spoken, Uncle Yang and Sister Yang were interdependent and did not turn their heads. They joined hands and jumped down the cliff without hesitation, both jumping down. The cliff is lined with strange rocks and overgrown with weeds. In addition to several lying on the ground, with blood and flesh blurred and apparently dead, there are also many women, children, and elderly people lying on the side, seemingly injured. Li Xiaobai's parents are also among them. Dad, Mom. Li Xiaobai was inexplicable in his heart and rushed forward a few times, shouting, What's going on? Good kid, are you okay? Son of a bitch, where did you die? Li's father and mother saw their beloved son rushing towards them, with a disheveled face and a blood-stained body. It didn't seem like a big deal to them, and they were pleasantly surprised for a moment. They almost shouted at the same time, expressing their concern in their words. Chapter 8 Soul Broken Cliff You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Li Xiaobai originally wanted to pounce into the open embrace of his mother. In front of the crowd and feeling a bit embarrassed, he nodded and smiled blankly. 
His suspended heart was half relieved, and he couldn't help but feel puzzled. He then asked again about what had just happened here. When it comes to the previous events here, the women, widows, and elderly have something to say. For a moment, they were full of gossip, with every word you said and every sigh mixed in, all eager to say something, but they couldn't understand anything. As one of the insiders, Lee's father also couldn't bear to hear it. With a long and thin face, he frowned and waved his hand, saying, Don't worry about it for now. I'll take care of this laborious matter. Previously, when a group of more than ten men in green clothes arrived at the home of the owner of the Nyojai, a group of seven or eight people were separated and set on fire, killing and looting everywhere in the village. Except for a few elderly, weak, women, and children who escaped in time, the others who remained to resist became the souls of those who were killed by the sword. This team of several men in green clothes chased after these old and weak women all the way up the mountain in order to eliminate them. At that time, Lee's father and mother were busy at home, and they heard a lot of noise outside. Seeing that something was not going well, although Lee's father had no strength to bind the chicken, he resolutely decided to lend a helping hand. Then he took Lee's mother and protected a group of orphans and widows to escape into the mountains and forests. There were also many ups and downs along the way, passing by the Yang family villa on the mountain. Coincidentally, the one-armed hero Yang Gua and Lady Yang, who were also busy at home, saw this situation and did not want to stand idly by. They decided to protect each other with righteousness and quickly became acquainted with the group of blue-clothed men who were chasing after them. Yang Gua and his wife were both strong opponents, and in the blink of an eye, they managed to eliminate a few men in green. The remaining five men in green saw that the situation was not good, so they took the opportunity to seize the way and retreat, while chasing after Lee's father, mother, and a group of more than ten weak women, old and young, and even rushing up the mountain to kill them. As a result, Yang Gua and his wife chased after him from behind, while five people in green clothes, as well as Lee's father and mother, fled from the front. In a panic, they reached the edge of the cliff and the casualties of the people in green clothes increased again. Two of them went. Seeing that they were invincible, the remaining three were also cunning and cunning, so they took Lee's father, mother, and others hostage in order to escape. Yang Gua and his wife are not bloodthirsty either. They have been living in seclusion here for many years and have not resorted to reckless killing. They agreed to let these three men in green leave this place alive, as long as they release more than ten hostages. Unexpectedly, this provides an opportunity for the enemy to take advantage of. Several people in green clothes were all fugitives. When they heard Yang Gua and his wife readily agree, they became suspicious and harbored the intention of killing the fish and breaking the net. When they pretended to retreat from the mountain, including Li's father and mother, they violently threw the hostages at Yang Gua and his wife one by one, at the same time, while the couple was frantically rescuing people, they suddenly fired dozens of poisonous darts and hidden weapons resembling locusts. Yang Gua and his wife unintentionally injured the villagers and used their divine skills to rescue and block them, risking their lives. They rescued more than ten hostages, but they were not particularly injured. However, it was difficult to defeat four hands with two fists. The couple devoted themselves to saving lives and sacrificing their lives. Under the continuous vicious attacks of the other party, they managed to protect all the villagers, but each was accidentally hit by a few poison darts. Moreover, this poison dart is extremely poisonous, with a rapid release of poison. Once triggered, even immortals find it difficult to survive. But even so, before the poison struck their hearts, the couple still exerted all their strength and killed the three men in green one by one. Uncle Yang and Sister Yang, why did they jump off a cliff? Upon hearing his father's summary of the situation, the young boy Bai's heart became tense and tense, with fluctuating emotions that were difficult to calm for a long time. He was greatly moved by Uncle Yang and his wife's desperate attempt to save lives. He was both surprised and filled with righteous indignation, but in the blink of an eye, he seemed to have discovered one of these significant loopholes and couldn't help but say. 
Do these bad people have any antidotes that can detoxify them? Lee's father gave a stunned look, and sometimes the boy would ask endless questions. And from time to time, he would always ask some strange questions. Even as a father, he couldn't figure out what was going on in his little head. He often felt overwhelmed and couldn't hold on to him, which made him impatient for a moment, stupid kid, if there's an antidote, you can still use it. Yang Guo and his wife were heavily poisoned and besieged by several men in blue. The poison quickly spread and became difficult to control. Before cutting the opponent's hand, they had also been forced to ask about the antidote, but were unable to obtain anything. The couple is loving and loving, and they have long been indifferent to life and death. As long as life and death remain together, they don't care much about anything else. Seeing that life is hopeless and they are about to die, they choose to fall off the cliff together, even if they die together. Well, even if they're going to die, the two of them can still die on this. Why do they have to jump down? Li Xiaobai thought about what his father had said, but after all, he didn't want to see Uncle Yang and Sister Yang disappear like this. He still had many unresolved doubts in his heart and couldn't help but walk to the edge of the cliff to look down. The cliff is a hundred zhang high, sliding straight down, shrouded in smoke and mist. It is difficult to see the bottom, and at a glance, it is eerie and eerie, making one's legs tremble with fear. If this were to fall, where would one still be alive? He thought for a moment and then said, moreover, their family also keeps many little bees, which can be very painful to sting. Those bees seem to understand their words, why don't they let the bees sting those bad guys? Where are these questions coming from? Why don't you go down and ask him? Lee's father couldn't help but laugh and cry, and his mouth was about to slip away. He frowned and quickly said, I haven't asked you yet. How many words did I practice and how many poems did I memorize today? Did I fight with someone again just now? The East is undefeated. Li Xiaobai has always been restless and restless since he was young. He has always been able to avoid things like dancing, writing, and writing. It is more difficult for him to practice calligraphy and recite poetry than anything else. After hearing his kind father's, deadly, questions, he was so anxious that he couldn't help but be taken aback. Suddenly, he recalled the terrifying situation he had in the village at the foot of the mountain before, and quickly blurted out in panic. Me, me, Xiao Niu. And the Niu and the others, together we killed that horse-faced villain named Dong Fang Wu. Speaking of this, a burly man in green on the ground seemed to have not died completely. He heard someone mention the name of the leader of his group, who had already been defeated and killed. In surprise, he suddenly stood up straight, with a fierce expression on his face, and pounced towards the young man with open teeth and claws. Li Xiaobai was standing on the edge of a dangerous cliff, and if he wanted to be knocked down, there was no need to say that he had to fly off the cliff and fall into a meat cake. Speaking late, then fast. Everyone was stunned for a moment, and Li Mu let out a roar. Without saying a word, she picked up a stone as big as a brick and tile in front of her and charged fiercely, smashing and bumping the person in green in the radial direction. Li's mother has a thick waist and strong legs, and her appearance is decent. At this moment, she only has a grey head and a rustic face. Her shoulders and body have been injured at some point, with blood-stained cloth clothes and a red complexion. She is an ordinary rural woman, and her figure is relatively robust. However, compared to the strong man in green clothes, she appeared much slimmer. In a moment of urgency, she was eager to save her child and reacted quickly. She wanted to hold on to the stone and hit it further, and this time she hit it with just one hit. She pushed out the stone with a sudden force, knocking the man in blue over and flying off a high cliff. Unexpectedly, she exerted too much force at this moment, which was also unfortunate. She had just knocked the other person down and flew away, but before she could recover her strength, she was just stepping on a piece of gravel on the ground, slipping and stumbling unsteadily. Her whole body immediately jumped down the cliff and fell. In the blink of an eye, unexpected changes occurred one after another, 
and everyone around them was stunned and stunned. Mother. The young man was stunned and his soul flew down, shouting loudly. He rushed towards the edge of the cliff and reached out to dance and grab in the air, but where else could he catch anything? Xiangu. Fortunately, Li's father quickly regained his composure and rushed forward, grabbing his son's calf and ankle. Otherwise, his small life would have to be buried under the cliff. Li's mother Zhang's name is Shi Xiang, and the sound of Xianggu is the affectionate nickname given by Li's father to her. She exclaimed in a moment of urgency. Mother. Li Xiaobai was still waving and grabbing on the cliff with both hands, tears flying like rain, and the cries echoing in the valley between the cliffs. In no time, I only heard Li Mu's shout in the mid-air below the cliff. Little Bai, be good. Live well. This shout is like soaring into the clouds, and it echoes through the cliffs for a long time. Chapter 9 Newborn calf, remember to collect. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Dad, I. I don't want to live anymore, please let go of me. In just half a day, he suffered from the loss of his mother and deceased companion, as well as a series of disasters and turmoil. No one could bear it. The young boy Xiao Bai hung on the edge of the cliff and shouted and grabbed for a while. He was lost and lost in thought for a moment but he fainted to death. I don't know how long it took, but when he woke up, his head was still a bit groggy, and the world around him became dark and heavy in the blink of an eye. It was already evening, and he was still standing at the top of the cliff. However, at some unknown time, his small body was firmly tied to a nearby large stone with a cow rope knot. Glancing at the old man who was thin and had starry white hair on his temples, and now seemed to have added a few more white hairs, he sat quietly beside him, his eyes still slightly swollen and red, and he secretly wiped away many tears. The young man didn't think much about it, but remembered that his mother had fallen off a cliff to save him. He felt deeply ashamed of himself, deeply disgusted, and couldn't help but cry out in a daze. Why didn't you go down, why didn't you save Auntie? Why did you tie me up? I want to go down, I want my mother to come back. Fool, what nonsense. At this point, the other weak women, old and young, had already gone down the mountain, leaving only the father and son still on the cliff. As soon as the child woke up, he would shout incessantly. Lee's father was not confused, but when faced with such a disaster, it was difficult to resist even if he was not confused. He was also a bit restless for a moment, and with a cross eyebrow and a glare, he cursed harshly. Can you still come back if you go down? What can you do if you go down? Did you forget what your aunt just said? If you keep shouting, you'll have to shut your mouth. Xiao Bai thought that his father was afraid that he would wake up and search for life, so he tied himself up with a rope. He realized that he was a bit unscrupulous just now and quickly closed his mouth, calming his mind. He also thought that when his mother fell off the cliff and still told him to live well, he was afraid that he would be unable to think of it and cause trouble. He is also not young or young. Although he has a rebellious and mischievous nature, his parents' love and care for him can be felt to some extent in his ignorance. However, he still feels chaotic and uneasy in his heart. Looking at the vast night sky in front of the cliff, he pondered for a while before finally saying in confusion. Dad, Auntie, she. She won't be okay, right? It was me who caused her trouble. Where did she go? Lee's father also looked up at the distant horizon, his face calm as if pondering, and he remained silent for a moment. The empty mountains are silent, the night is as cool as water, and the vast and boundless sky is deep, dotted with stars and shining with the moon. Suddenly, a shooting star flashed past, dragging a long trail of light to shine at the end. In an instant, it disappeared without a trace, as if suddenly rushing from the night sky and disappearing into it. No one harmed her, this is her life. Lee's father thought of his beloved wife's slender figure and pondered for a while before finally saying something meaningful and muttering to himself, Blame me me, I shouldn't have brought her here. 
He had originally planned to take advantage of the warm and peaceful spring season to have another child with his beloved wife. However, he never imagined that he was working hard towards this small goal. In the blink of an eye, his beloved wife had already passed away like a shooting star from the sky, never to return. In the blink of an eye, the dazzling meteor disappeared from sight. He turned his eyes around in the starry sky, seemingly hoping for something. After hearing his father's words, he pondered for a moment and secretly said, What will my life be? He was about to ask, but he didn't ask. The father and son stayed on the cliff for a whole night, both acting as guardians and hoping for a gust of wind to blow the people below. They leaned against the stone and chatted casually without a word, without sleeping all night. The next day, with bright daylight, Father Lee untied the rope that was tied to the child. Last night, after learning that the young man was with the father and son of the Nyo family and had indeed killed the evil star leader who came to slaughter the village, Lee's father was not only shocked but also worried all night. He thought that the young boy had caused a big trouble this time. Although the other party did not know which path of evil bandits and strong men they were, they were both organized martial arts gangs. The group leading the way had no return, and they were unlikely to be killed again soon. At this point it was not advisable for him to stay here for a long time. He did not say anything strange to the child because of this. After staying for a moment, he turned his head and looked back at the empty cliff of the green mountain. Even if he was reluctant, he could not bear it. Then he hurriedly went down the mountain with his son. Xiao Bai had just taken a few steps together when he realized that his father was walking with a slight limp, leaning on a raw wooden stick in his hand. It turned out that he had accidentally injured a group of people on his feet while protecting them up the mountain, but it wasn't a big deal. What he probably wouldn't know is that if he hadn't always felt uneasy after tying him up, his father would have already jumped off the cliff several times, living and dying together with his beloved wife, like the one-armed hero. The reason why he was tied up was also because Lee's father was afraid that after he left, he, who was still young and lonely, would also find his own shortcomings on impulse. On a stone wall facing the deep cliff, there are three new characters engraved. Soul-breaking cliff, and several lines of small characters on the side. As the young man turned his head and descended the mountain, he caught a glimpse. He thought it was because when he had fainted before, in order to leave a memory, his father and other villagers from the same village had chiseled and chiseled together, but he didn't pay much attention. From the previous incident until now, he seemed to have not completely calmed down. At this moment, he seemed to have truly lost his soul and soul, and his little head was still a bit confused and disoriented. His feet were also swaying and walking forward, following his father like a walking corpse. After being burned and slaughtered overnight, the once well-preserved Nyo family village was now in ruins, with all the houses destroyed and ruins visible everywhere. At first glance, apart from the devastation and bones on the ground, it seemed as if everything that had been alive before had also been extinguished and gone. There seemed to have never been such a place between the green mountains, clear waters, and the vast expanse of heaven and earth before. The young man's detached cottage at the end of the village was implicated in a fire and has already been burned down halfway. Fortunately, Lee's father had a chance to take away a box of sage books before, and most of them were unharmed. They still stayed well in the wooden box, and together with the box, they were unharmed and undamaged. The father and son had just arrived at the foot of the mountain and searched for the book garden www.chaoshuyuan.com. Black mist and green smoke filled the air, and a burnt smell drifted down everywhere. Apart from a few mournful cries and cries from time to time from the village, they only heard faint cries of killing from the direction of the village entrance, and it was unclear whether the accomplices of those people in green clothes had killed again. Li Fuying bravely fought back and was injured. He even threw his beloved wife into the water overnight, but he didn't want to wade in that muddy water again and die in vain. This place doesn't have much to wait for now. He quickly walked back to the house and hastily packed his books and some simple luggage. Then he picked up his box, took his son, and hurriedly left by taking a small path along the river. 
To Lee's father, this box of books is like a box of precious treasures, more precious than anything else, and to the young novice, it is like a box of big backpacks. There are so many books in it that he can carry them. As my father joyfully carried the bookshelf out of the ashes and ruins just now, the young man with a still confused mind inexplicably had an urge to snatch it away and throw it into the still burning fire in front of the house, so as to extinguish the fire. Not long after leaving the village, I arrived at the riverbank where I had a duel with the fat cow yesterday. Suddenly, I saw a little calf, who was only one or two months old and had just been born, lying quietly and alone on the grass. Little cow. The boy Li Xiaobai, who was originally feeling a bit dazed, suddenly burst out and shouted. The tears on his face, which had not yet dried up, suddenly became wet again, and he ignored everything. He quickly took off and rushed forward in a meteor-like manner, ready to hug the little cow. The little calf was startled by this sudden shock, causing its calves to soften. Seeing him rushing towards him, it didn't dodge or dodge. It grabbed the bull's head, which had not yet grown horns, and pushed it against him again and again. 